So hey guys, welcome to another Warframe video and today I want to show you a build that I've been playing with on Bungie Prime. However, before I show you the build, I just want to let you know that every time I say anything good about this build or I give you an example of how strong this build can be, I want you to immediately mentally append it with, but at the same time you're also incredibly squishy and you're probably gonna die while you're doing it. Example, this build has one of the cheapest ways of stripping the enemy of their armor. It doesn't matter what enemy it is, it will just strip them of their armor completely. But at the same time, you're also incredibly squishy, so you're probably gonna die while you're doing it. It also does it with a very cheap ability. With this setup, it costs about 7 energy and it has area of effect, so it's great for hitting groups of enemies. And when you combine it with a weapon that's designed to damage the enemy flesh and not get through their armor, it can one-shot even the toughest units. But at the same time, you're also incredibly squishy and you're probably gonna die while you're doing it. It also synergizes really well with explosive weapons launchers like the Tonkor or Penta because these do mostly blast damage and blast damage is fairly neutral when it does damage but it's just not very effective against armor. But blah 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 rocket face death while you're doing it. And yes you can use silence which will stack at the enemies once you get close to them so you can get in a hit or two. But... There you go. So the build I ended up with is actually fairly cheap, it's just a one forma build where I've added a D for quick thinking. The aura I decided to use is a rifle amp which I sometimes swap out for shotgun amp if I'm using a shotgun. You can also go with energy siphon if you want to invest one more forma into the build to change the V in the aura into a dash but rifle amp and shotgun amp are probably the best because they just increase the damage you do. Corrosive projection here is kind of useless because we're running Sonic Fracture with enough power strength to strip any enemy of their armor, so we don't need it from corrosive projection. Now, power drift and intensify are all that we need to get enough power strength for Sonic Fracture to strip away the enemy armor completely. It's actually 143%, but with this you get 145, which is basically as close as you can get. Then I've added stretch, which allows me to stay farther away from the enemies, which is good, and it also allows me to hit more enemies with each cast. Next up, we have Prime Flow, which you don't really need to bank energy for abilities, but you really, really need it for quick thinking. Quick thinking is the only thing that's gonna keep you alive when the pitiful amount of shields and health that you have go down. And I did try running this with Prime Vigor and Redirection and Prime Vigor and Vitality, and I really didn't like it. It was not enough. And even with quick thinking, you're still incredibly squishy. It's gonna work versus the lower level enemies, but since this build is kind of designed to kill higher level enemies, like this heavy gunner right here, you will still die in a couple of seconds if you stand in the open. Next up I have Streamline and Fleeting Expertise, that's two ranks from the top to avoid some unnecessary overcapping on efficiency at the cost of power duration and this is to allow me to use Silence and Sonar as much as I want to and also spam Sonic Boom like crazy because you don't just want to use it to strip the enemy of their armor, you also want to use it to knock them down so they don't kill you. And once again I did try a different setup that had more range at the cost of efficiency and with that Sonic Boom cost about 28 or 29 energy and that was just straight up terrible because you would burn through your energy very quickly and as soon as you don't have energy, you're dead. Then of course we have to add Sonic Fracture because without it this wouldn't really be much of a Sonic Fracture build and this is what makes Sonic Boom strip the enemy of their armor. It starts off at 70% with an 8 second duration but as I've said already with 43% bonus power strength it strips it all. And finally I'm using Prime Continuity to balance out fleeting expertise and give me slightly more power duration because the armor reduction from Sonic Fracture is affected by power duration. Now when I first finished this build I was really excited about it, I even tweeted about it at McGentleman, CZ, ho ho, self promotion, blah blah blah. But as time went on and I played more and more missions, I started to realize that this build is just not for me. It is not a bad build by any means, it is a fantastic build, I enjoy the way it works. It's just that I prefer playing tanky frames that don't do as much damage over glass cannons that do a lot of damage but also die very quickly. I'm not the type of person that enjoys sitting back and doing a ton of damage and going oh god oh god oh god bombard rocket bombard rocket run away. No 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 no. If you've ever met me in a squad, you know that's not what I'm like. I'm the moron with Rhino Prime that charges in the middle of corrupted juggernauts while laughing maniacally and starts stomping and swinging his Rhino crutch around. That's me. So it's not much of a surprise that I do not really enjoy a build that's pretty much as squishy as it gets. But I also understand that there are people that absolutely love glass cannon setups, which is why I decided to share it with you before I swap to a build that I like a little bit more. So something that's more defensive and it's probably gonna focus on sonar instead. But once again, this doesn't mean that the build is bad, I really like it and what I like about it the most perhaps is that it's a glass cannon setup that's not selfish because everyone in your party is gonna benefit from you stripping away the armor of the enemies. And the fact that you can do it on such a large scale and with such a cheap ability is fantastic. 
So if you were looking for a glass cannon setup that just blows everything up, this is a fantastic one to try, even though I personally don't enjoy it myself. And that's pretty much it for the video. So I thank you very much for watching as always, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.